The sky above Talaquesa glowed with the soft hues of twin moons, casting their light over the resort's bioluminescent shores. The waves lapped gently, leaving behind faint traces of phosphorescence in the sand, which shimmered like a thousand tiny stars at Theo's feet. For a moment, he closed his eyes and let the warm, slightly alien breeze wash over him. He needed this. After months of high-stakes logistics runs, some legal, some less so, Talaquesa was his first real break in years. A place where no one knew him and where he could fade into the background. Or so he thought. Is this seat taken? Theo opened his eyes to find the source of the voice. It was smooth, almost melodic, but with a confidence behind it that was hard to ignore. He turned his head and, for the briefest moment, his mind faltered. Before him stood a woman who looked as if she had been sculpted from the very fabric of starlight and shadow. Her skin, green but not an earthy green, had the hue of freshly bloomed leaves after a rain, glowing faintly under the moon's light. Her eyes, large and amber, reflected the moons like mirrors, and they were fixed squarely on him. Theo blinked, struggling to catch up. Uh, no, it's not, he finally said, gesturing to the seat next to him. Thank you, she replied, slipping gracefully onto the cushion beside him, her long limbs moving like liquid. The subtle scent of something floral, alien, yet strangely familiar, drifted in the air between them. For a moment, Theo felt like he'd stepped into a dream. The reality of his mundane life couldn't quite reconcile with the fact that the galaxy's most famous supermodel had just sat down beside him. Not that he knew who she was, her fame had always been background noise to him. He barely kept up with human celebrities, much less intergalactic ones. I'm Oriel, she said, her eyes not leaving his face. Theo? He gave a nod and forced a smile, feeling a little out of place. He didn't know what else to say. It's a nice evening. Oriel tilted her heed slightly, her amber eyes twinkling with amusement. It is. Her gazer shifted briefly to the twin moons above. I enjoy this planet. It's peaceful, untouched by the usual chaos. A place to get away. Yeah, Theo said, his voice trailing as he tried not to focus on how intensely she was watching him. That's what I was hoping for, a break from everything. She smiled, her lips curving upward in a way that seemed almost mischievous. I imagine your everything looks a little different from mine. Theo chuckled softly, relaxing a bit. Yeah, you could say that. I'm just here to disappear for a bit. No obligations, no problems to solve, no. He paused, unsure of how much to reveal about his rather chaotic life. No galaxy-threatening emergencies, she teased, a slight lift in her brow. I know that feeling. There was something behind her words, an unspoken weariness. It made Theo pause. She didn't sound like the glamorous, carefree celebrity he'd expect her to be. She sounded tired. For a moment, their lives, as different as they were, seemed to overlap in the shared weight of it all. Well, no galaxy-threatening emergencies for me, he smirked. Just the usual cargo runs, avoiding the occasional pirate raid and trying not to get blown up. Oriel's smile widened, but it was her eyes that revealed more, an understanding that was more personal than her public persona might suggest. I envy that kind of life sometimes. Simple, direct. You see a problem, you solve it. In my world, nothing's ever that straightforward. Theo raised an eyebrow. You envy smuggling cargo? Oriel leaned back, her gaze drifting to the rolling waves. I envy the freedom. I deal with politics. Subtle manipulation, veiled threats, and too many people pretending to be something they're not. Theo leaned back as well, his curiosity piqued. What are you? It was a simple question, 
but it hung between them like a challenge. For a moment, Oriel was silent, her ease still fixed on the waiter as if she were searching for an answer. I am many things, she finally said, her voice softer now. A model, an ambassador, a negotiator. But none of that matters, really. Not here. There was a vulnerability in her words that caught Theo off guard. He hadn't expected this level of honesty from someone like her. He hadn't expected her, period. He shifted slightly, uncertain of how to respond. So why are you here? he asked, trying to steer the conversation back to something less weighty. Oriel turned her head, her gaze locking onto his again. This time, her expression was serious. To disappear, just like you. Theo didn't miss the shift in her tone. Suddenly, he was acutely aware that this wasn't just some random encounter. She had chosen him, sat beside him, started this conversation for a reason. But what? You could have disappeared anywhere, he pointed out. Why here? And why me? Her eyes glinted with something that felt like a challenge. Maybe I'm curious about humans. She said it so simply, but the intensity in her gaze made Theo's breath catch in his throat. He laughed, breaking the tension, though it felt a little forced. We're not that interesting. I disagree. Her smile returned, softer this time. There's something fascinating about your kind, your adaptability, your resilience. Theo wasn't sure if she was complimenting him or humanity as a whole, but either way, it left him feeling off balance. He leaned forward, elbows resting on his knees, trying to gather his thoughts. The soft hum of distant alien music from the resort played in the background, adding an odd serenity to the moment. You're different from how I imagined you'd be, he admitted, glancing at her from the corner of his eye. Disappointed, she asked, her voice tinged with amusement again. No, Theo replied honestly, just surprised. You're not what I expected. Good, Oriel said, a knowing smile tugging at her lips. I hate being predictable. Theo chuckled softly, but it was quickly drowned by a deep, resonant chime that echoed across the beach, the resort's signal that the evening had officially transitioned into night. The light along the shoreline dimmed slightly, leaving the bioluminescence in the water to glow even brighter. Oriel rose to her feet with the grace of a dancer, turning to face Theo. For a moment, neither spoke. There was something hanging between them, unsaid but palpable. Good night, Theo, she said softly her voice lingering in the air like a whisper on the wind. Before he could respond, she turned and walked away, her silhouette fading into the glowing night. Theo watched her go, feeling the weight of her presence even after she disappeared from sight. He let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. This was not how he expected his quiet vacation to begin. As he sat alone under the alien moons, the sand shimmering at his feet. One thought kept circling in his mind. Who the hell is Oriel Quora, and what does she want with me? Three weeks had passed since the surreal evening on the glowing beaches of Talakessa, and Theo had almost convinced himself that meeting Oriel Quora had been a bizarre, one-off experience. Back in the gritty confines of his star freighter, he was back to reality, deep space, cargo runs, and the occasional pirate attack. The luxury of the alien resort had started to feel like a distant dream, but that dream had followed him home. Theo stood in the cramped kitchen of his ship, sipping a lukewarm cup of synthetic coffee. The ship's AI, an outdated model named Sylvie, was running through routine diagnostics, her monotone voice echoing through the empty halls. It was a quiet, uneventful morning, until his comm panel blinked to life with an urgent incoming transmission. Theo furrowed his brow. No one contacted him unless it was about business, and he didn't have any runs scheduled. 
His thumb hovered over the accept button, but he hesitated for a moment. Something in his gut warned him this wasn't a routine call. He tapped the screen. The holographic image of a tall, green-skinned figure appeared, and Theo's breath caught in his throat. Auriel. She stood with her arms crossed, her usual composed expression somewhat strained, her golden eyes locked onto his. Hello, Theo. Theo blinked, unsure how to respond. Auriel, what... What are you doing here? The last time he'd seen her, she was disappearing into the shimmering night on Talaquesa. Now she was standing in his ship's comm unit, her face illuminated by the faint blue glow of the hologram. We need to talk, she said, her voice calm, though there was an underlying tension to it. In person. In person? Theo repeated, confused. Why? What's going on? Auriel took a deep breath, her expression softening slightly. It's complicated. I'm close by. Can I come aboard? Theo's mind raced. He barely knew her. They'd spent one strange, intriguing night together, talking under alien moons. He hadn't expected to see her again, and certainly not in this way, but the urgency in her voice told him that this wasn't a social call. Yeah, sure, he said slowly, still trying to process what was happening. Docking bays open. The transmission cut out, and Theo set his coffee down with a sense of foreboding. He didn't have long to wait. Within minutes, his ship's sensors pinged the arrival of a sleek, high-end vessel. Definitely not the type of ship that just wandered into backwater systems like this one. As the docking bay doors slid open, Auriel stepped out, her green skin glinting under the ship's harsh lighting. She was dressed in something far more practical than the flowing gown she'd worn on Talaquesa, a sleek, form-fitting flight suit that looked like it belonged to a star pilot. But her face, her eyes, carried the same intensity that had unsettled Theo the first time they met. What the hell is going on? Theo asked, cutting to the chase as she approached him. There was no point in pleasantries. Something was clearly wrong. Auriel didn't waste time. I'm pregnant. The words hit Theo like a physical blow. He blinked, his brain scrambling to make sense of what she'd just said. Wait, you... what? I'm pregnant, she repeated, her tone firm but not unkind. And it's yours. For a long, bewildered moment, Theo just stared at her. He felt like the universe had just flipped upside down, and he was falling through space without a tether. His mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. Finally, he managed. That's not possible. Auriel sighed, rubbing the back of her neck in a gesture that made her seem almost vulnerable. I know this is hard to believe, but Verulian biology is different. Our bodies are highly adaptive, especially with species that we are genetically compatible with. Conception happens quickly, but the pregnancy is far more complicated than a human one. Theo's brain caught up, but barely. Hold on, he said, trying to steady himself. You're telling me we spent one night together on a resort, and now you're pregnant? Yes. Her voice was calm, but there was an edge to it, as if she'd had to explain this before. Humans and Verulians can't... We can't just... We can. Auriel's eyes softened as she stepped closer. Theo, I wouldn't be here if I didn't need to be. I know this is a shock, but I've spent the last few weeks consulting Verulian doctors. They confirmed it. This pregnancy is real, and it's happening faster than it would for either species on its own. Theo's thoughts were spiralling, he rubbed his hand over his face, trying to ground himself. I don't know what to say. I'm not here to ask anything of you, Auriel said, her voice gentler now. But you deserve to know. And more importantly, there are complications. Complications? That snapped Theo's attention back. He narrowed his eyes. What kind of complications? Auriel's posture stiffened. 
The pregnancy itself is stable, but this child is a hybrid, half virulian, half human. It's unprecedented, and some people are taking an unhealthy interest. Theo's stomach dropped. What kind of interest? She glanced away, her amber eyes flicking toward the ship's windows where the vastness of space stretched out before them. The Drakvans, a radical faction of my people. They believe in the purity of Virulian genetics, and they see this child as a threat. Theo felt a cold chill run through him. This was worse than he thought. You're saying they want to hurt you? Or the baby? They want to erase us, Oriel said, her voice low, almost a whisper. To them, this child represents everything they fear. A blending of species, a breakdown of the old ways. They will do anything to stop it. Theo stared at her, trying to process what she was telling him. He had gone from a quiet vacation to being the potential father of a hybrid child that was now the target of a galactic extremist group. It didn't feel real. It didn't feel possible. I came to you because I trust you, Theo, Oriel said, stepping closer again, her eyes locking onto his. I need someone who understands how to handle danger, someone who can help me protect this child. I know this is a lot to ask, and you're free to walk away, but I can't do this alone. For the first time, Theo saw something in her that wasn't just confidence or poise. He saw fear. She had risked everything to come here, to ask for his help, and though he barely knew her, the weight of her words pressed down on him like gravity. He swallowed, trying to clear his thoughts. This wasn't about him anymore. This was bigger, bigger than either of them. I'm not walking away. Theo said finally, his voice steadier than he expected. But if we're doing this, we do it right. What's our next move? Oriel exhaled slowly, a flicker of relief crossing her face. We go back to Talaquesa. The resort is shielded and off-grid. It's the safest place we can go while we figure out how to deal with the Drakvans. Theo nodded, the reality of the situation sinking in. There would be no running from this. The only way forward was through. All right, he said. Let's get moving. As they prepared for departure, Theo couldn't shake the feeling that his life had just changed forever. He wasn't just a cargo runner anymore. He was about to be a father, and he was about to face an enemy that wouldn't stop until they were both erased from existence. The tranquil beauty of Talaquesa had lost some of its allure. When Theo and Oriel arrived back on the bioluminescent shores, the resort's stunning vistas and sparkling waters felt more like a fragile shield, one that might not withstand the storm coming for them. As they disembarked from Theo's ship and stepped onto the floating dock, the weight of their situation pressed down harder with each passing moment. The resort staff, composed of various species from across the galaxy, greeted them with warm smiles, oblivious to the threat lurking in the background. Theo, however, couldn't shake the feeling of eyes watching them. He glanced around, his senses sharp, scanning for anything out of place. Talaquesa's security is the best in the galaxy, Oriel said softly as they walked side by side down the dock toward the main resort. No one can get in without clearance. We should be safe here. Theo grunted in response, but his hand hovered near his belt, where his holstered pulse pistol rested. He didn't take chances, not anymore. I've heard that before. People who say they're untouchable usually end up being proven wrong. Oriel glanced at him, her amber eyes catching the reflection of the resort's soft glow. Do you ever relax? Theo smirked, but it was strained. Not when people are trying to kill me, no. They reached the entrance to the main complex, a towering crystalline structure that seemed to shimmer in the light of the twin moons. The resort's holographic concierge, an elegant humanoid figure composed of flickering energy, appeared before them. Welcome back, Miss Quora, Mr. Carter. 
it said in a pleasant, soothing voice. Your private suite has been prepared. We hope your stay continues to meet your highest expectations. Theo gave a short nod and followed Oriel through the entrance, trying to suppress the growing tension in his chest. Inside, the resort was just as opulent as he remembered. Bioluminescent plants hung from the walls, and the air smelled faintly of exotic flowers. Other guests, dressed in silks and finery from distant planets, moved about with the carefree attitude that came with wealth and security. But Theo didn't feel secure, not even close. Oriel led him to their private suite, a sprawling open space with floor-to-ceiling windows that overlooked the glowing beaches below. As they entered, the room's lighting adjusted automatically, bathing everything in a soft, warm glow. Theo dropped his travel bag to the floor and moved immediately to the windows, scanning the horizon with narrowed eyes. He saw nothing unusual, no sign of danger, but his gut told him to stay vigilant. Oriel watched him for a moment, then sighed. You're not going to let your guard down for even a minute, are you? Not if we're being hunted, no, Theo replied, turning away from the window. And if these drachvans are as dangerous as you say, then we have every reason to stay sharp. Oriel moved to the plush seating area and sank into one of the cushions, her long limbs folding gracefully. She rubbed her temples, clearly weary. I don't doubt the threat. I've been dealing with them my whole life. But you need to understand, they're not just soldiers, they're fanatics. Theo leaned against the wall, crossing his arms over his chest. Tell me more. She looked up at him, her expression somber. The Drakvans believe that Verulian purity is sacred. Our species has always prided itself on our genetics, our ability to adapt and evolve. But the Drakvans take that to an extreme. They see hybrids, especially ones with humans, as an abomination, a threat to the purity of our bloodlines. Sounds like your garden variety extremist, Theo muttered, but his tone was cold. They're worse than that, Oriel continued. They have deep connections within Verulian politics. They operate in the shadows, but they have influence, and they won't stop until they've eliminated what they see as a threat. Theo exhaled slowly feeling the enormity of the situation settle over him like a weight. This wasn't just a few radicals with weapons. This was a powerful, organized faction with a specific goal, to erase the child Oriel carried. His child. So what's the plan? Theo asked, his voice low but steady. We can't just hide here forever. Oriel nodded, her expression thoughtful. No? We can't. But for now, Talaquesa is the safest place for us. The resort's shields are state-of-the-art, and the planet is off-grid. No one should be able to track us here. I've already alerted the resort's security team. They'll be on high alert. Theo wasn't convinced. What about off-world? If they have political connections, they could track our movements the moment we leave. Oriel's eyes darkened. That's the problem. Once we leave this planet, we're exposed. We'll need to move carefully, quietly. But for now, we have time. I need to figure out how to deal with the Drakvans politically before they escalate their efforts. Theo watched her, noting the strain in her expression. For someone who seemed to have everything under control, Oriel was showing cracks in her armor. It was clear that this wasn't just a personal issue for her. It was a battle that went far beyond the two of them. Before he could respond, a faint chime echoed through the suite, signalling an incoming message. Oriel rose from her seat and moved to the console near the window. She tapped the screen, and a familiar face appeared, a Verulian male with silver hair and stern, calculating eyes. Councillor Vrel, Oriel greeted him, though there was a noticeable tension in her voice. The counsellor's gaze shifted to Theo briefly before returning to Oriel. 
I see you've made it to Talaquesa safely. Good. But we have a situation. Theo's pulse quickened. What kind of situation? Vrel's expression didn't change. The Drac vans are mobilizing. Their operatives have been spotted near the border planets, and they're not being subtle. It's clear they're searching for you. Theo cursed under his breath, but Auriel remained calm, her expression hardening. How long do we have? Not long, Vrel said grimly. They've begun rallying their supporters. I expect a direct confrontation within days, maybe less. I've done what I can to slow their progress, but they're moving faster than we anticipated. Theo stepped closer to the screen. So, what's the plan? How do we stop them? Vrel's gaze flicked to him again, this time with a hint of curiosity. You must keep Oriel and the child safe at all costs. If the Drakvans reach Talaquesa, it will be difficult to defend the resort. It was never meant to withstand a large-scale assault. Theo clenched his fists. So we're just supposed to sit here and wait for them to show up? No, Oriel said, her voice cold and decisive. She turned to Theo, her amber eyes blazing with determination. We're going to take the fight to them. Theo blinked. What? How? The Drakvans are based on a border planet called Vrossar, Oriel explained. If we strike first, we can disrupt their plans and weaken their forces before they can mobilize fully. Theo's mind raced. He wasn't against taking the offensive, but the idea of charging into enemy territory with a pregnant Verulian supermodel felt insane. And yet something about Oriel's unwavering resolve made him believe they could pull it off. How are we going to pull that off? Theo asked though his tone was already shifting toward acceptance. Oriel smiled, and there was a glint of mischief in her eyes. I have a few allies left. We're not going into this alone. For the first time since she'd arrived on his ship, Theo felt a flicker of hope. Maybe they had a chance after all. But they would need more than just determination. They would need a plan. We're going to need more firepower, Theo said his mind already ticking through the logistics. And a damn good strategy. Oriel nodded. Leave the strategy to me. You just get us the firepower. As the two of them stood together in the soft glow of the resort's suite, Theo realized that this fight was more than just about survival. It was about standing up for something bigger, for a future that was worth fighting for. And he wasn't going to let anyone take that from them. Talaquesa's calm night sky was a deceiving backdrop for the whirlwind of preparation happening within the suite. The bioluminescent waves outside continued their tranquil dance, oblivious to the storm brewing inside. Theo paced near the control console, his mind moving faster than he could process. Oriel sat cross-legged on the floor, an array of holographic maps and data projections hovering in front of her. They had been at it for hours, strategizing, planning, and contacting Oriel's allies, but despite their efforts, Theo felt the weight of the unknown bearing down on them. They weren't military strategists. Oriel was a diplomat, and he was an ex-soldier turned smuggler. They were in over their heads, and they both knew it. So, let me get this straight, Theo said, running a hand through his hair. We're supposed to slip past the Drakvan blockades, infiltrate their stronghold on Vrossar, and destroy their communication network, all while staying hidden. Oriel's amber eyes flicked up from the data projections. More or less, yes. Theo gave a dry laugh. That's insane. Do you have a better idea? Oriel's voice was steady, but there was a challenge in her tone. Her patience with his constant questioning was wearing thin, though she hadn't snapped yet. Not quite. Theo sighed, crossing his arms over his chest. He didn't have a better idea. He didn't have any idea. He just knew that everything about this felt like walking into a death trap. Oriel stood and moved toward him, her eyes softening as she placed a hand gently on his forearm. Theo, 
I understand how this looks, but we can't wait for them to come to us. If we do, they'll overwhelm us. They'll find me. They'll take the child. Theo's stomach twisted at her words. The child. His child. He was still trying to wrap his mind around the fact that he was about to become a father, let alone that his unborn child was already a target in a galactic war. I know you're scared, Oriel said, her voice lower now, almost a whisper. But we can do this. We have to. Theo looked into her eyes, seeing the vulnerability behind her usual calm exterior. For all her strength and poise, Oriel was terrified too. She was carrying a child, their child, and the future of that child was entirely uncertain. But more than that, Theo realized she wasn't just fighting for the future of the baby. She was fighting for a future with him, however impossible that seemed. He took a deep breath, feeling the knot in his chest begin to loosen. All right, he said, nodding slowly. We do it your way, but we don't go in blind. We need more intel on Vrossa. We need to know where we're hitting and what we're up against. Oriel's expression softened with relief. Agreed. I've already reached out to one of my contacts on the inside. He's a Drakvan defector. If anyone can get us the intel we need, it's him. Theo raised an eyebrow. A defector? How do you know you can trust him? I don't, Oriel admitted. But he's the only one with access to the Drakvan's inner circle. If we're going to pull this off, we need him. Theo rubbed his chin thoughtfully. The plan was still risky as hell, but if they had someone on the inside, it might just work. He wasn't one for blind optimism, but he couldn't afford to be pessimistic now. Not when the stakes were this high. Just as Theo opened his mouth to respond, a sharp, shrill alarm echoed through the suite. The room's soft lighting shifted to an ominous red, and the AI concierge's calm voice announced, Warning! Unauthorized vessels approaching. Resort security activated. Theo's heart sank. They found us. Oriel's eyes widened, but she moved quickly, racing to the control console and pulling up a live feed of the approaching ships. The holographic display revealed several sleek, angular vessels cutting through the night sky, heading directly for the resort. It's them, Oriel muttered, her voice tight. Drakvans. Theo clenched his fists, his mind snapping into combat mode. How the hell did they track us here? I don't know, Oriel said, her fingers flying across the console as she activated the resort's defense systems. But it doesn't matter now. They're coming. Theo turned, moving swiftly toward the weapons locker he'd brought with him. He popped it open and grabbed a pulse rifle, then handed a smaller blaster to Oriel. How long do we have before they land? Oriel glanced at the console her face grim. Ten minutes, maybe less. Resort security is scrambling, but they won't be able to hold them off for long. Theo cursed under his breath. They were out of time. We need to get to the shuttle, if we can get off planet before they land. No, Oriel interrupted, shaking her head. They'll shoot us down before we can get past their ships. We have to stay here and fight. Theo stared at her, you want to stay and fight? Here? There's no other choice, Oriel said, her voice firm. The resort has defenses. We can use them to our advantage. If we try to run, we're dead. Theo ran a hand through his hair again, his mind racing. Every instinct told him to run, to get Oriel and the baby as far away from the Drakvans as possible. But she was right. There was no running now. They had to fight or they wouldn't make it out alive. All right, Theo said, gripping his pulse rifle tightly. What's the plan? Oriel quickly pulled up a schematic of the resort. There's a security control room on the west side of the building. If we can get there, we'll have access to the resort's automated defense drones. We can use them to hold off the Drakvans long enough to call for reinforcements. Theo nodded his mind already shifting into tactical mode. 
And if the drones aren't enough? Oriel's jaw tightened. Then we fight. The tension between them was palpable as they moved quickly through the resort's winding corridors. Theo's heart pounded in his chest, adrenaline coursing through his veins. He'd been in life-or-death situations before, but this felt different. It wasn't just his life on the line. Oriel and the child, their child, depended on him, and the thought of losing them made his blood run cold. As they neared the security control room, the ground beneath them rumbled with the distant sound of ships landing. Theo's pulse quickened. They were running out of time. They reached the control room, and Oriel immediately began accessing the resort's defense systems. The holographic display showed the Drakvan ships touching down on the beach, and figures in dark armor spilling out into the night. Come on, come on, Oriel muttered, her fingers flying over the console as she activated the defense drones. Outside, small spherical drones emerged from hidden alcoves around the resort, their laser cannons humming to life. Theo watched the live feed as the drones moved toward the approaching Drakvan soldiers. They won't hold them off for long. I know, Oriel said, her voice strained. We just need to buy time. Theo moved to the door, pulse rifle in hand. I'll cover the entrance. If they break through, we'll have to hold them off ourselves. Oriel nodded, but Theo could see the fear in her eyes. This wasn't a battle she was used to fighting. She was a diplomat, a negotiator. She wasn't meant to be here, in the thick of things. But she didn't back down. She didn't run. Theo admired her for that. As the drones fired their first volleys at the Drakvans, the sound of blaster fire echoed through the resort. Theo stood at the door, his finger hovering over the trigger of his rifle. His mind was focused, his body tense, ready for the inevitable clash. But despite the chaos, a strange calm settled over him. He wasn't just fighting for survival anymore, he was fighting for something bigger, something worth dying for. Oriel. The child. The future. The door to the control room shuddered as the first Drakvan soldiers reached it, their weapons firing relentlessly at the heavy metal frame. Theo's pulse quickened, but he stood his ground, his rifle aimed at the door. I won't let them take you, he whispered, though he wasn't sure if Oriel heard him. The door buckled under the assault, and Theo took a deep breath, steadying himself. The fight for their future had begun. The door to the control room shuddered again, buckling under the relentless assault of the Drakvan soldiers. Theo tightened his grip on the pulse rifle. His body coiled like a spring, ready to react the moment the door gave way. Next to him, Oriel worked frantically at the console, deploying the resort's last line of defense drones, but the tension in her shoulders betrayed her fear. They both knew it wouldn't be enough. Drones are in position, Oriel said, her voice tense but controlled. But the Drakvans are overwhelming them. We've only got a few minutes. Theo didn't respond, his focus fixed on the door. Every muscle in his body was ready for what was coming. He could hear the soldiers shouting commands, the metallic sound of their armored boots hitting the floor outside. The moment the door blew, he would have to act fast, take as many of them down as he could before they breached the room. Then the inevitable happened. The door exploded inward with a deafening crash, sending shards of metal flying across the control room. Theo didn't flinch. He stepped forward, pulse rifle raised, and fired. The first Drakvan soldier stumbled back, a clean shot to the chest sending him crashing to the floor. But there were more, too many more. They poured into the room like a black tide, their dark, angular armor gleaming under the room's emergency lighting. Their faces were obscured by helmets, but Theo didn't need to see their eyes to know they were here to kill. He moved with the precision of someone who had seen combat too many times before. His pulse rifle spat out blasts of energy, hitting target after target. 
One soldier went down with a shot to the leg, another with a clean hit to the shoulder, but the Drakvans kept coming, relentless in their advance. They're breaching the east side too, Oriel shouted over the sound of gunfire, her voice frantic. Theo, we can't hold them. Theo's heart pounded as he fired again, taking down another soldier, but Oriel was right. The Drakvans were pushing forward, overwhelming the resort's defences. He could hear the distant sound of drones being destroyed, the high-pitched whine of their systems shutting down. It was only a matter of time before the Drakvans had them cornered. But he wasn't giving up. Not now. Not when they had so much to lose. Fall back to the west exit, Theo shouted, turning to Oriel. We can still make it to the shuttle. Oriel hesitated, her fingers hovering over the console as she tried to keep the resort systems online. We'll never make it past their ships. They'll shoot us down. Theo gritted his teeth. She was right, but staying here was a death sentence. His mind raced, searching for an option, any option. Then it hit him, a risky plan, but their only shot. Deactivate the energy shield around the beach, Theo said, moving toward the exit. Oriel's eyes widened in confusion. What? That'll leave us completely exposed. Exactly, Theo said, his voice determined. If we lower the shield, the Drakvans will think they've won. They'll move their ships in closer to secure the area. We can use that moment to get off the planet before they realize what's happening. Oriel stared at him, her amber eyes wide with realization. It was a gamble, a dangerous one. But she trusted him. She had to. There was no other way. With a sharp nod, Oriel turned back to the console and deactivated the shield. The moment the shield dropped, the change was immediate. The pounding gunfire outside slowed as the Drakvans stopped to regroup, sensing victory within their grasp. Theo knew they were repositioning their ships, bringing them closer to the planet's surface to land their final blow. Now, Theo said, his voice low but urgent, we move, fast. They bolted from the control room, moving swiftly through the winding corridors of the resort. Theo led the way, his pulse rifle ready, though the gunfire had all but stopped. The eerie silence that followed felt heavier than the chaos they had just left behind. Every step echoed loudly in the empty halls, but they had no time to lose. We'll cut through the service tunnels, Theo said, glancing at Oriel as they ran. It's the fastest way to the shuttle bay. Oriel nodded, her breath quick but steady. I'll cover our backs. They reached the service tunnel entrance and Theo wasted no time prying the door open. Inside, the tunnel was dark and narrow, lit only by the faint glow of emergency lighting. It was a sharp contrast to the luxury of the resort above, but it was also the fastest way to get to the shuttle. As they hurried through the narrow passage, Theo's mind raced. They were almost there. If they could reach the shuttle before the Drakvans realized what had happened, they had a chance. A slim chance, but a chance nonetheless. The tunnel opened up into the shuttle bay, and Theo felt a surge of hope as he saw their small craft waiting, engines already primed and ready. Oriel had prepared everything in advance, knowing they might have to make a quick escape. We're almost there, Theo shouted, his voice echoing through the bay. But as they neared the shuttle, a warning klaxon blared through the hangar. They figured it out, Oriel shouted, turning back to see a group of Drakvan soldiers pouring into the bay, their blasters raised. They had seen through the plan, and now they were closing in. Get to the shuttle, Theo yelled, firing his pulse rifle toward the advancing soldiers. Blaster fire leaped up the bay ricocheting off the metal walls as Theo provided cover for Aurelie. But Aurel didn't hesitate. She sprinted toward the shuttle, her long strides carrying her quickly across the open bay. Theo backed up toward the ship, still firing at the soldiers, but they were closing the gap too quickly. We're not going to make it, Aurel called out, 
her voice filled with desperation as the soldiers advanced. Yes, we are, Theo growled, shoving her up the shuttle ramp and into the cockpit. He dove in behind her, slamming the hatch shut just as a blaster bolt scorched the door. He could hear the drakvans pounding against the hull, trying to break in. Get us in the air! Theo shouted, rushing to the co-pilot seat. Now! Oriel's fingers danced across the controls, and the shuttle's engines roared to life. The ship jerked forward as it lifted off, the ground beneath them shrinking as they ascended into the night sky. But the Drakvan ships were already moving to intercept. They're closing in, Theo said, his eyes scanning the radar as the enemy ships honed in on them. Oriel's expression was grim. I'm pushing the engines to max, but they'll catch us if we don't. Suddenly the comm panel blinked to life, and a familiar voice crackled through the speakers. You didn't think we'd leave you hanging, did you? Theo's eyes widened. Vrel? A Verulian warship materialized out of hyperspace, its sleek form cutting across the stars. In a swift maneuver, it fired a volley of plasma rounds, hitting the Drakvan ships squarely. The enemy vessels veered off course, scrambling to evade the unexpected attack. Get out of here while you can, Vrell's voice commanded over the comm. We'll cover your escape. Theo didn't hesitate. Go! Oriel slammed the throttle forward, and the shuttle shot into the atmosphere, breaking through the planet's gravity well, and into the cold vacuum of space. Behind them, Vrell's warship continued to exchange fire with the Drakvan fleet, buying them the precious seconds they needed. As the stars stretched into long, brilliant lines, Theo finally exhaled. They were safe, for now. Oriel leaned back in her seat, her breath coming in slow, steady waves. We made it. Theo glanced over at her, feeling the tension in his body begin to fade. Yeah, we did. There was silence for a moment, the two of them catching their breath, the weight of everything that had happened still hanging in the air. But there was something else too, something new, a quiet, unspoken bond between them. Oriel turned to face him, her amber eyes glowing faintly in the cockpit's dim light. Theo, I couldn't have done this without you. Theo met her gaze, his expression softening. You're not in this alone, Oriel. We're in this together. Oriel's lips curved into a small, tired smile, and for the first time Theo saw her relax, truly relax. The war wasn't over. The Drakvans would come for them again, and they both knew it. But in that moment, as the stars stretched out before them, it didn't matter. They had fought together, they had survived, and they had a future ahead of them, one filled with uncertainty, but also with possibility. The child, their child, would be born into a galaxy that was still dangerous, still divided. But Theo and Oriel would face it together. Whatever came next, they were ready. The shuttle hummed quietly as it soared through the stars, leaving Talaquesa behind and heading toward the unknown. But for the first time in a long time, Theo wasn't afraid of the unknown, because he wasn't facing it alone. 